interesting thing is that coming into the training, we would tell them exactly what they needed to do to win. Mm-hmm. And this is what this is why this is what's interesting. So going to CQC, when I go out and watch CQC, you'd have some instructors that would like to talk a lot, and you'd have another instructor that or another group of instructors where they do a little bit more action, a little less talk, a little more do. And you take those two groups, like they'd be one platoon with a talking instructor and one platoon with an action instructor. And so the, the talking instructor, he's sitting there telling stories and talking about this and giving all these details and talking through it again and hey, watch this and watch me do this and let me explain to you this and talk and talk and talk and talk. And then there'd be another guy that, hey, here's the basic, here's the fundamentals, all right, start doing it. And almost, well, it's guaranteed that the platoon that started doing it is going to learn it quicker. The platoon that just gets to hear about it, it's not going to, it's not going to land. Now, look, you need some level of instruction. Somebody needs to tell you, like, this is what we're doing. This is how we do it. You can't just go blind, obviously. But what's interesting is we would tell the guys, hey, here's what you need to do to win. Cover and move, simple, prioritize and execute, decentralized command. You, you need to do that. If you don't cover and move out here, you're going to get shot up. If you don't have a simple plan, it's going to be insane. In, we're going to have a bunch of problems. You need to prioritize and execute. By the way, you need to use decentralized command because things will be happening that not one person can control. You need to detach, take a step back. Like We would tell them these things. We would tell them. But they would understand it, but then you got to go and do it. You got to go and poop, get put in to those situations. I mean, I'm just writing so much down. Like since we started talking, I just want to hit all these points. But um, what you're just talking about goes along with, I remember when I was at trade at one of my chiefs told me as an instructor, he's like, hey, we have to teach these guys how to think, not what to think. Because the battlefield is very dynamic and these guys need to be able to think on their own. And it wasn't until we actually had them out there doing it it doesn't matter. You can give a scenario all day long. You can tell stories, but until somebody's actually putting their hands on it, it doesn't matter. I, I, you know, I teach shooting on the side, and I can talk about it all day long, but until I have somebody actually loading rounds into a magazine and then locking the slide to the rear and be like, oh, that little button, yeah, that's how you lock the slide to the rear. And I can talk about it all day long, but if they've never done it, to watch somebody fumble over the most basic thing that I think is just the most basic thing ever, but if they've never shot before, that's actually a real big deal. Locking the slide to rear, putting a loaded magazine into a gun, releasing the slide, making sure rounds chambered. These are things that you and I do without even thinking. No thought whatsoever. No thought whatsoever. I can hear the slide go forward and know if a round is chambered or not. Whether it was that magazine seated all the way, was it not? Did a round actually get chambered? And I've done that before. I'm like, there's nothing in there. And I checked the magazine. It wasn't fully seated. Check the chamber. Yep, no round in there. Because we've done it hundreds of thousands of times. Someone who's never done it, they actually have to do it before they can feel it. And when people feel it, then that's what that's when it, it comes home. Like you were saying earlier, like when you when you make a mistake and you feel that mistake, when um the cool thing about the FTX program is I've been able to build a team, you know, and Cody's been on full time with us for, geez, almost over three years now. We just got Carlos Mendez on, on board full time where, I mean, you know, all these guys that I have on the team are studs, you know, Cowie, Danny, and we do what we teach, right? And so now my team is doing all the classes, all the intros in the morning so I can be detached. I listen, I observe, I come in with my points when I need them. And one of the things Carlos always says that, I always say that Cody always says that you guys always say is, hey, when you make a mistake where it costs you something, you feel that and you remember it. And it's just that's the power of of training is when you can feel a mistake, you'll remember that mistake. There's something when you said you got to do it right. It's so strange. The experience that you can watch people have as they get wrapped up and absorbed and overwhelmed by the mayhem. And this happens when you run your FTXs. Yep. When I'm out there, I'll watch people go insane. Yep. They're totally, they're having an out of body experience, like an out of mind experience. It's crazy to watch. And sometimes they don't even understand it. I, I remember when we first started getting video cameras 
and we started videoing training. This was like, the first time I would say I, I videoed training was maybe in the late 1990s. Hey, let's watch our room entries and see what they look like. And occasionally you'd get a guy that would just do something so insane and they wouldn't even understand that they had done it. Mm-hmm. They, they wouldn't understand that they had done it and you'd have to say, look at the video. Watch, watch what you just did. We'd be like, hey, you backed out of that room. I didn't back out of the room. No way. No way. Okay, watch this. There you are, literally backing out of the room, right? You, you didn't even understand that you did it. Remember I used to have my little audio yes. voice recorder? <laughs> so I used to carry a little audio voice recorder, Echo Charles. Yes, sir. And the reason, because at during these nighttime FTXs, there's all this stuff happening, and you can't write notes. So I would just, most of the time, I'd just be saying, oh, they pulled a guy off the flank over there. That guy's left by himself. That This is going to go bad. I would be making notes to myself, and then I'd come back and be like, hey, you guys left that guy out on the flank. That's how he got left behind. Mm-hmm. So I would make notes to myself, but then sometimes I would use it to capture the audio of what was actually occurring, mm-hmm. of people losing their minds, of people yelling, screaming, giving crazy orders, not under, like I would record conversations that were mutually unintelligible between two people, mm-hmm. where two people were talking to each other and neither one of them, it made, you could play it and it'd be, it would be a senseless conversation that made no sense whatsoever. They're talking about two totally different things. Like one guy's like, we need to get back over there. And the other guy's like, yeah, we do. But one person is talking about back over there behind the building. The other person's talking about back over there across the street. Mm-hmm. They're talking about two totally different things. And you, I would record them and, and then play it back for them. And they'd realize how absorbed and how you get into this mode where your world is shrinking, you're, you're getting target fixation, you're, it's the opposite of detachment. You're doing the opposite thing. You're just getting fixated on what's right in front of you and it'd be a total disaster. But what's good is when they'd hear that video or they'd hear that audio and you'd see the look on their face like, damn, dude, I suck. I suck. I sounded like an idiot. I sounded like a complete idiot. And then that would be a way to kind of crack the ego open and crack the mind open and for them to be like, dude, what are you saying I need to do? Mm -hmm. Yep, here's what you need to do. Take a step back, man. When this stuff starts getting crazy, when people start yelling, if you're yelling, you're the platoon commander. If you're yelling and screaming, this is not a good indication. So as soon as you start raising your voice, think to yourself, why am I raising my voice right now? What it, what is happening? I'm not saying you never have to raise your voice, because sometimes you do. Sometimes you gotta you gotta get control of things. But if that's what's happening, you know something's wrong. Mm-hmm. So guys would that's what would start to kind of get their minds open sometimes, where they would start to realize like, oh, I'm not as good as I thought I was, and I just had a freaking out of body experience, mm-hmm. and I think I might be an idiot. <laughs> that that's what makes the field training exercise program 100%. that we run at Echelon Front. That's what makes it the most impactful form of training that we have at Echelon Front, because you're feeling it. Like you said that late. This isn't just me saying because it it's my my program, right? It's because it's the truth, like you actually feel it. You come back from a run and you're humbled and you're sitting there and the first thing we do is we debrief that run. All right, what was your key takeaways? And we're always very clear. Remember, we don't care about the tactics. We're not here to teach yep. you tactics. I don't, if you were supposed to come up on the east side, you went to the west side, doesn't matter. What did? What was your takeaway that applies to business or your personal life? And so people are, like you said, that you just cracked it open. They feel that, it's humbling. Um, we had a guy like you're talking about like people just saying crazy stuff. We've had, we've heard this one multiple times. It'll be like squad one, line up on the left. Squad two, line up on the left. Yeah. And people are like, look around, like, why? And they're like, why is nobody moving? <laughs> they don't realize they said that. Yeah. We were running one a few weeks ago up in Michigan, and it's one of our scenarios where I'm not going to give it out. But anyways, it's a stressful situation, and all of a sudden we we change something on them. It's a prioritize and execute run. And the guy's sitting there and they come up with a plan and somebody asks a question. He's like, it's the plan that they came up with. We're going to do it. He was quoting as if it was somebody else's plan, but it was his <laughs> plan that he just came that he's telling the team to go, but he's so overwhelmed. And I remember I was watching him and he like just drops the laser tagger to the side, his hands to his side and takes a step back and looks around and goes, we're going to do their plan. <clears throat> Yep. Oh, I'm writing this one down. Yep. <laughs> and in the Have debrief, you ever heard that Jason Gardner story? 
Jason Which Gardner, one? they get done. They're at CQC. They're like out outright here in SoCal, mm-hmm. just in our little kill house. They do a run, and they're standing around debriefing. And one of the officers cracks off around as they're standing there debriefing. It goes Holy between shit. like a guy's legs, and the guy the, the guy looks up and he and he goes, "He was decocking it," <laughs> meaning he's talking about himself in the third, third person, person as if this. Is, well, that, that's the exact same thing, dude. Like you're when you start referring to what's happening as if it's someone else in a bad way. This is not a good sign. I stole your uh, your voice recorder trick for when I got out and I was doing sales and I'd be driving, you know, I was start off cold calling and then I'd just go to appointments and I, I was more efficient on the road, but I would try to hit as many people as a day and I get done with a run. Well, I had to take notes on the conversation I just had so I could follow up with the right contract and everything else like that. But I also couldn't sit in a parking lot for 15, 20 minutes because I had other clients. I had that anxiety that I needed to go, go, go. Well, I was also commission based only, so I needed to get out there. And so I, I bought a, a, a recorder and I'd get done with the meeting. As soon as I walked out of their doors to my rental car, I'd start debriefing mm-hmm. myself on that meeting as I'm driving the next one, stop. And then I would do that. And then at the end of the night, I would listen to all those notes that I had for each one, generate the emails, contracts, whatever, get them sent out. And it was. I mean, I stole that from you from Trade Act. Yeah. It was efficient. <laughs> I have some of those recordings. I sent I sent a group text with some of those yes, recordings. You did. Some some team guy because team guys used to record me debriefing. Mm-hmm. Now it wasn't me. It wasn't those things. I do have some of those things too. Still, some of the just out in the field, like like, hey, what's going on right now? I have no idea. idea. 